So let's start talking about candlesticks and candlestick math. Now, candlestick math is a way of describing what some people refer to as blended candles. So today I'm gonna to use the term security when talking and referring about any tradable instrument, but I might say Euro or Bitcoin, or I might say Facebook or Google, but I'm talking about all tradable financial markets. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading. Typically an investor takes a long-term position while a trader takes a much shorter term position. We know the difference. Now, the first thing people ask me whenever I'm giving a live class, I'm doing a seminar, I'm doing a conference, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one training. What should I buy today? What should I sell today? Where will prices be later? Where will prices be next week or next month? Well, the fact is I don't have a Ouija board. I don't have a crystal ball. Anybody who tries to tell you they do is full of it. Price is random. Price is dictated by human interaction. Now we can try to analyze what price is trying to tell us. We can try to take some way to interpret the randomness of the markets. And we do this by using technical analysis. And it will help improve your trading, but it's not gonna tell you what an asset is gonna be doing next because it's not a Ouija board, it's not a crystal ball. Now, everybody in the market today wants to talk about candlesticks. It is the buzzword for online trading. You know, it wasn't too, too many years ago, we didn't have retail trading and we didn't have retail Forex trading or retail CFD trading. And the fact is we didn't have the new modern HTML charts or the Java charts that allow us to do a lot of things we can do. So when I started trading, 45 years ago, very few people use candlesticks, even though they've been around to the 17th, since the 17th century, because they were time consuming to draw on your charts. And in those days we had to hand draw, we were hand charting. And so it was just time consuming. So we all use bar charts on the whole. Then when the new computerized charts or computerized charts came around, we really couldn't do much with them. We, they, there was no setting, so to speak. We could look at them, we could click on candlesticks, but we couldn't do anything with them. So again, many people didn't use them. Then what happened was the retail market started to grow and people like looking at the red and green candles. And they thought by determining or reading these red and green candles that they could predict what the market was doing. And we're human beings, psychologically, we see lots of red, we think down, we see lots of green, we think go. Now, the thing about candlesticks is then what came around is all those candlestick patterns and people trying to learn and memorize all of these patterns. And there's 32 basic patterns with 16 top patterns, but it was memorization and it was so hard to actually use in the CFD and Forex market because the markets changed so fast. By the time you'd look and find a pattern, it was moved on and, and the, the trade had gone past you. So understanding candlestick patterns goes far beyond remembering and recognizing certain formations. Many books have been written on candlestick patterns featuring hundreds of different formations that supposedly provide secret information about what's gonna happen next. Yeah, sure, secret information. There is no secret information in the marketplace. There's you, there's me, there's knowledge, there's training, there's education, there's strategies but it's really me against you. There is no secret. Somebody's not gonna give you some scanner that's gonna make you a billionaire. It's learning and practicing. Now, the truth be told, it makes no difference to your trading performance whether you know what the concealing baby shallow is or three black crows, or unique three river, river bottom patterns are. What really matters is that you understand what the candlestick in front of you is trying to tell you about price structure. Because remember, we can only trade at the wall. We can only trade here. So what it told us back here doesn't really help us. We need to know where to go this way. Now, understanding some of the 
formation, so if they do form at the wall, can help you. But what really matters to you to understand candles in front of you is price structure, trend strength, buyer and seller dynamics, and the likely path of future movements. So if we look at a candlestick, and forget the wicks, okay, we don't care if the wick was all the way up here or all the way down here, we're concerned with the open and the close. Because that's what tells us who's in the control of the markets in that particular trading session, whether you're looking at a 15 minute candle or a one hour candle. You need to know who has the control. Now, there are four elements and we can't ignore a candle. You have to understand the basics of actually reading a candle. So there are four elements to a candlestick. Now remember, before we start getting the actual elements, it's important that you are in the right mindset. Let's think about price movements like a war between bulls and bears. I think it was a tug of war. You have bears on one side of the stream, bulls on the other side of the stream, and they're pulling back and forth. Sometimes a bull falls into the water, sometimes a bear falls in. Sometimes the bulls rally and pull the bears into the water, sometimes it bounces back. But all that matters is at the end of that, tug of war when they all put down the rope, who or what is where. What really happened in between? It doesn't make much of a difference, just where they started and where they ended. Okay. So every candlestick is a single battle. So if every candlestick is that tug of war, and after so many minutes that tug of war is over, they all take a breather, they have their beers, they have, you know, they, they grab some food and 15, and they're back to it. So we need to know who's pulling back, who's in control, who's a better chance of winning the next battle. Now it's crucial to understand that candlesticks cannot be observed alone. They're not in a vacuum. A candlestick always must be analyzed in the context of what has happened in the past. So wherever we try to analyze a candlestick or a formation, we need to ask our question, ourselves one question. The current candlestick, is the current candlestick larger or smaller than the previous ones? Is the size change meaningful or not? So in other words, if you saw a green candle with a great big long body, and then you saw a green candle, a red candle with a short, short little body, that tells us something, okay? Now, do we have to read candlestick patterns? No. But this is a meaningful shift in the market because what's happening here, if this was the open and this was the close, we had lots of buyers or lots of bulls running in that market and they were just pushing their price. Now the next session opens and even if it opened here and came down slightly or opened here and went up slightly, we had a significant shift in the size of that candlestick. That tells us that there's been a shift in the instant sediment in the market, not the long-term sediment, but all of those bulls that pushed up the market here should have rushed in to keep pushing it up. Well, they didn't. So we have to know, is the change happening during an inactive trading period? For example, candlesticks on the Euro Forex pairs tend to shrink in size during quieter Asian seasons. Okay. Now, this has to be looked in relation. Like in, if you're looking in the markets as late in the day, and all the US economic data has come out. The Asian sessions are, are closed. European sessions are coming down to an end. And all this open is the US session, but all the economic has been come out. All the news headlines have come out. And so in the US, it's, it's sitting at you know, one or two in the afternoon. Well, you would expect the candles to be getting smaller only because there's less activity in the markets. Not necessarily that an asset's going up or down, but this could be predicted because there's less volume and less movement in the markets because the markets aren't necessarily expanding. Okay. So this can sometimes explain the shifts between candlesticks. Okay. So let's talk about the four elements. The body of the candle is a great starting point because it contains lots of information. A long body is showing strength, 
When weak bodies become larger, it shows an increase in momentum. When bodies become smaller, it shows slowing momentum. The body shows how far prices traveled over the duration of the candle. Now we're only talking the body. That's the open to the close, not the wicks. Now wicks can show the volatility of price movement. Larger wicks show that prices moved a lot during the duration of the candle, but it got rejected. When candlestick wicks become larger, it shows an increase in volatility. This often happens after long trending phases before a reversal happens or at a major support or resistance level. Now a shadow on the top of the candlestick represents sellers in control of the market. A shadow is also a wick. A shadow at the bottom of the candlestick represents buyers in control of the market. Now we can slowly put this together. Do we see longer wicks or bodies? In high momentum trends, you can often see long bodies with small wicks. With uncertainty, when uncertainty rises, the volatility picks up and the bodies become smaller while wicks become larger. Now, now you're saying to me, why is this important? Well, when we apply candlestick math, we're gonna be blending candles together to come up with a high point and a low point of the bodies, which will help us project that out into the future. And so we're, we're important to understand what the bodies are telling us. A large shadow on top of the body of a candlestick represents a significant selling and is considered to be a bearish signal. A large shadow at the bottom represents significant buying and is considered to be a bullish signal, even if the body of the candlestick is red. So we have the five elements of a candle, the length of the wicks, the ratio between the bullish and the bearish wicks, the position of the body, the size of the body, and the ratio between the body and the wicks. So most people don't realize you have to break the candle down in these five pieces, okay? So in other words, we're looking at the body, but we're also looking at how big the wicks are and the relationship between these wicks and the body. So a large body and small wicks indicates great strength, whether it's bullish strength or bearish strength. The larger body and the smaller wicks and the greater the strength. Then a long wick and a body near the other candle and shows that momentum has shifted. So here, whether it's bullish, we had all of this activity by the bulls pushing the candle all the way up there. But for some reason they lost and the candle closed down here with a small body. Just the opposite is here. So a long body, a long wick and a body near the other candle end shows that momentum has shifted. When both wicks on both sides of the candle are long and we show a body towards the middle, that's showing us there's equal strength on equal sides of the market. Okay, now, how do we then use candlestick math to blend these candles together? Because what we're gonna be looking at, we're combining, is we're gonna be looking at the bottom of the wicks, the high of the candlestick, and the open of the candlestick, which is gonna give us three pieces of information. Now we can blend together as many candlesticks as we want. We're looking for the lowest point of the wick, the highest close, and the original open. When we add these together and project them forward, this is gonna give us a new candlestick. We're gonna have this open, this close. So since the open, the close was higher than the open, we have a green. Now this is not a candlestick appearance chart. This is our mathematic candle. We also have the low here. So this gives us our long wick. This gives us our imaginary candle, which is the blend of these or several previous candles. So this candle, this imaginary candle, is what we use to interpret what's happening in the markets. 
So when two single candle lines are combined, the meaning on the chart can become much more significant. You get an even sharper view into the psychology of the markets and the potential for the market reversal. Blended candles go hand in hand with multiple time frame analysis, which is a skill you need to better identify the overall trend of the markets and generate rock solid entry and exit points. Now we'll go into this more detail. I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I know it gets a little bit confusing. So here we see this again. We have one candle plus two candles, okay? So we take the low, draw it forward. We take the open and drag it forward. We take the highest close and drag it forward, and then we take the top of the wicks. And what does this create for us? This is our blended candle. Now, what we had here was a bullish engulfing pattern. Now this bullish engulfing pattern translated actually into a hammer. Here we have the reverse scenario. We had a bearish engulfing candle, candle pattern and that translated by adding them together into a shooting star. So candlestick patterns are made up of one or more candles. These can be blended together to form one candlestick. This blended candlestick captures the essence of the pattern and can be formed using the following. The open of the first candle, the close of the last candle, the high and the low of the overall pattern. By using the open of the first candle and the close of the second or the last candle and the high low of the pattern, a bullish engulfing pattern or piercing pattern blends into a hammer. The long lower shadow on the hammer signals potential bullish reversal. With As with the hammer, both bullish engulfing patterns and piercing patterns require bullish confirmation. Now, this gets a wee bit confusing, I know. Okay. So I've got an actually presentation prepared for you that I'm gonna share with you in a second. But more than two candles can be blended using the same guidelines. Open from the first, close from the last, and the high and low of the pattern. Blending three white soldiers creates a long white candlestick and blending three black crows creates a long black candlestick. We can blend different adjacent candlesticks to form a single candlestick, thus summarizing the outcome over several periods of one candle. So it means if you see the markets all going down, you see you're, you're trading at the wall, okay, you can actually draw, use the last couple candles and put them together to make this mathematical candle. So why would we wanna do this? Well, first, all of the blended candles can create a single stronger signal. Secondly, by blending candles, one memorizes market noise, thereby getting a more accurate reflection of the underlying activity. Third, we can blend certain candles to see patterns, which we aren't normally visible. Finally, continually watching individual candles play out over short time frames creates stress that we can and frequently, uh -oh, and frequently does result in premature stopping or exiting points. So let's look at this presentation, which I hope is gonna show it to you a little bit better. Now you might have to turn up your volume. Okay, this is an example of candlestick math. Now this animation doesn't belong to me. I got this off the, uh, uh, I recorded it off of uh, a course I was taking. and I, But I think it's a, an apt description. The, the uh, animation is much better than I can do. Anyway, um, the concept is the same. You see these two bars side by side. It's just showing you where the wicks are, where the bodies of the bars on these two separate bars are. In the first case, we have a bear bar. 
Second case, we have a slightly bullish bar, but when you add these two bars together, you can see that this bullish bar and this bear and this this bearish bar and this bullish bar winds up with a slightly bearish bar with a little bit of uh, body and these this much longer wick. Now, the reason that you add these two bars together is that you see this bar looks completely different, this single bar, from the two previous bars. So you took them individually. The idea is to try to ga gain perspective on a series of bars and to see whether or not markets are in balance or markets are trending. And if markets, if you take a, a bunch of bars and put them together, you, after practicing, you can see that these two bars, the bearish and the bullish bar together, winds up with a bar that is relatively neutral, maybe only slightly bearish. Okay, despite the fact that the previous bar was more of a bullish bar. So when you look at a series of bars side by side, you can make a better judgment, in my opinion, as far as determining whether or not these series of this bar or the series of bars are going to lend toward a, a give you some perspective on the context of the marketplace. Now, let me show you how it works uh, when you have a, another series of bars and, and add them up. The idea that I've got here is that this, let's say that you have a stop below here. This is your hard stop, and you've, this is where your target is, which is the green line. And it's flagged as a valid entry. Now, once you get the entry, your bar goes up. You have a, a slightly uh, bullish bar, and things look pretty good. Uh, on the next bar, it's, it's bearish, so you're really back at your entry price. Uh, after a little while longer, you get another slightly bearish bar, or a bullish bar, I mean. Um, another bearish bar, this is a stronger bearish bar, and then subsequently a, a tiny little bar, which is a, another another slightly bearish bar with a small body. Look, looks like price is coming back a little bit, You're kind of getting moving back and forth. Another slightly bearish bar, another slightly bearish bar with a bit of a gap, and then you... And that's it. It's okay. Well, I'm going to bail out. This is just too much, too much of a hassle. It's not going anywhere. I can get bail out. And then the next bar comes up and it's a bearish bar. You get, pardon me, you get out here and then the next bar goes to target. So the point is, is that you waited through most of it. And then just before it had the chance to get to target, despite the fact that your target and your stop was in pretty good shape, you bailed out prior to the, the last bar going to target. You can see you waited through all of that other noise, uh, waited through it, and then got out at the inopportune time. Got it at the time just before it went to target. Despite the fact that your calculations, your uh, setup for the original trade was valid. So it wind up and it hit the target without you. So you got a break even trade or maybe even a slight loss because of the fact that uh, you got you you weren't confident in how you set this up in the first place. Using the same, you have to see the original entry, at, this is the original entry at close. You do some candlestick math from the candle after entry to uh, to candle, from candle after entry to candle when the trade was exited. So you add all this together. You add all the bars to when the trade was exited. And you'll see that this is a bar that is just uh, really neutral. It... You end, you exit it based on a, uh, this is the high, you take the low, you take the lowest part of the body, you take the highest part of the body, and you wind up with a doji. So things really didn't go anywhere. And all those bars, despite the fact that it whipsawed back and forth, prices didn't move. And if you were to exit on the second to last bar, you had exited on in a situation where prices were just stuck. So if you move that back... If you add all those bars together, you end up with just a, uh, a a neutral bar, basically neutral bar. You would probably be more inclined to stay with that trade, particularly if you did the research on the rest of it and everything was fine. So that's uh, really the summation of, of why candlestick math can be helpful. Because if you move that, if you keep that in mind and you have that really nondescript candle, uh, to add them all together, you can see that those 10 bars that were added together just equaled one bar, which was relatively neutral. All right, let me show you in a real world example from yesterday. In this case, I've got this box marked off, this, this gold box, and it's marked off with, uh, it encompasses the 16 bars. 
And in these 16 bars from top to bottom, the Y value is 18 ticks from top to bottom. As you can see, prices, a couple of bear bars, a couple of, of uh, bull bars, slightly moved down, moved back up, moved down. Now, I got it right up to this end bar, and if we add all these bars together, using candlestick math from the previous uh, previous example I showed you, then you'd wind up with a bar that looks like this. Price has moved up, it's moved down, but when it's closed, it's closed right on this this level right here. The next two bars in this line, if we added these next two bars over, you could see that it closes on its high, it closes right on the high, over and above this, so this bar, it would look like this, a long taper with this. Now, if you're looking at these first 16 bars and you look at this particular uh, this particular bar and trying to determine whether to go long or short, this is, well, so it's, it's in green, but this bar here is just a doji. So you can see that the buyers and sellers are just in balance here. This bar, on the other hand, if you take this one by itself, you can see that prices had gone all the way down to this area, came all the way back up and closed on its high. So this is a, more of a bullish bar. And as you can see, that if you were to wait on this, this is, of course, they're both 18 ticks long. However, which bar would you be more inclined to go long with? Likewise, the reverse is true when it's short. So using candlestick math can help helps me get a, a little bit more clarity to the market, particularly when you're seeing prices go up on a, on a run. And in this case, uh, at this, uh, this juncture, if you look at it from the perspective of, off of this bottom, price has moved up to this area. Now, our price is going to continue up. And when you look at these bars in sequence, after a 21-minute period of time or 22 minutes, you can see that at the very end of this line, price has just moved up higher. And would it go to now? This isn't just the only way you would determine whether to go long on this particular bar. But if our target is up here in this area and you get a bar closing like this, it may give you more impetus to getting into that particular trade. At least that's the way I look at it. So that's how candlestick math can help you to uh, give you some context to the market. And the nice thing about using candlestick math is that once you've practiced this uh, for a while, it, you can start to see these, uh, these types of candles on the chart in real time. And that's the point. When we can see, when you can see these kinds of things on re in real time, it'll be more inclined to um, you'll be more inclined to take the trade in the direction of where things are heading. Even if you wind up with a, a reasonably tight trading range, and in, in uh, what, what so as you can see, candlestick math isn't that complicated, and you can use many many candles. You just have to remember you start with your opening candle, and you start with the open from that first candle. Whichever it is, if you have five candles, six candles, to whatever that range is that you're analyzing and you want to make sure you're doing it up to the wall, because you want to look at this way forward, and you take the open and bring it forward, you'll take the close of the most recent candle and bring it forward, you take the high of the wicks, the highest point in that range, the lowest point in that range, and then you have your new mathematics candle. And that has interpreted everything that has happened and tells you what is happening now in the markets or what the market sentiment is or what the buyers and sellers are doing at present in the marketplace. So it's important to understand that, and I can't understate it, is the psychological aspect. Reacting to short-term patterns plagues most investors. Analyzing groups of blended candles enables us to focus on our trading plan, thereby restraining the emotional reaction arising from the adverse short-term trading movements. In other words, it helps us not get caught up in the noise and to stick to our original trading plan, waiting for stops and targets to be reached or to set at the beginning of a trade. So there are many candlesticks. Now, you have in there your cheat sheet because when you put the candles together, and form this blended candle, you can look and see what that analysis is or what that definition of the candle is, or after some time, you'll be able to look at the candle and interpret what it's trying to tell you. So the very simple first thing we have to do is first decide how many candles we would like to blend. Because you just don't blend back forever. You wanna look for when the market is doing something. 
to decide how far back you know. You're just going to say, well, I'm going to arbitrarily always go back 14 candles, and then this time I'm going to go back 16 or 22. You're going to look for something to happen in the market, and then take the opening price of the first candle, the highest and lowest price achieved of all the candles in that group, and the closing price of the last candle. That's it. And then draw them forward to blend your candlestick. So when you use only two candles, and I never use two candles in my candlestick pattern. I always use many because I want, and especially when you're trading in short-term markets and using a 10-minute candle or a 15-minute candle, you need something to tell you what the overall market sentiment is getting you to where you are. So as indicated, this provides an aid in summarizing the actions of the market over the only the past two periods if you're using just two candles, which may be totally misleading. So the easiest way is you can eyeball this. Eyeballing the pattern may suggest that the first and the second candle would constitute a valid bearish engulfing. However, the truth is of it is the second candle is in a short line. So it helps us see whether that bullish or bearish engulfing pattern is really a true indication of what's happening in the marketplace. So in other words, the trader will see the patterns which could be difficult to notice with the naked eye without candle blending. So that's it on my notes on candle blending, but it's a new idea of looking at candlesticks and it makes it a lot faster and easier for us to use it in our short-term trading. So use that cheat sheet I gave you, start blending together. You'll be, it's, like, it's actually kind of fun to draw on your charts. It only takes a second to do it and look for it to see what, you know, use the last few candles, see what the market is trying to tell you. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. If you do have any questions, go to www.legacyfx.com and click on their chat button, and somebody there will be glad to answer your questions one-on-one -on -one for you. Thanks. Trading online, including Forex, cryptocurrency, CFDs, and more. Please make sure you click below to subscribe, to like, and to comment on my videos. It's very important. So thank you very much, and watch all of the Barry Norman YouTube videos. Thanks.